Skid Row, a part of Los Angeles you don't see in movies, has the largest concentration of homeless people in the United States. But in the midst of the poverty and struggle, there is a safe haven where creativity is encouraged. Inner City Arts opened 25 years ago. Since then, they have brought life-changing opportunities to 150,000 children of all ages. The state-of-the-art campus includes visual and performing arts studios, a professional theater, and gallery spaces for students' artwork. None of this would be here if it weren't for Bob Bates. One day I was meditating in my studio, just sitting quietly, and this is when I was, at this point I'm probably somewhere around 40 years old, right here, okay, I'm 73 now. And so I'm, I'm sitting there in the studio and in the silence of my meditation, I heard a voice, a man's voice say very quietly, get an art space for kids. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And then I carried the idea around for about five years. Toward the end of the five years, I had this vivid dream. And in this dream, these people came to me in the dream and they said, Bob, you've carried this idea for five years. If you don't do something with it pretty soon, we're taking it away from you and we're going to give it to somebody that can make this happen because we want the school to start. And so that mobilized me. Step by step from there, the program just grew. So, Bob had a vision, but who was Bob before the vision? Where'd you come from? I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri as a little kid. And when I was in fourth grade, I actually moved probably in third grade to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. My dad had a, got a different job. And so he was working in Kansas City, and then we moved to Oklahoma City, and then I was there until I graduated from high school. My dad could make anything. He taught me that you can literally build anything. I think I learned more from my dad in that sense, because I would see my dad, he would say, uh, ah, well, let's, put, let's take that window out. So he'd take a window out, or he'd put a window in, or put a door somewhere, or build something, and I saw that you can make anything you, your mind sets to do, you just do it. And so that gave me great uh, impetus to, to be an inventor and explorer. I went into the Army and I was in basic training and learned how to be a soldier and how to shoot guns and throw hand grenades and all that stuff. And then uh, I started going to these special classes where I was, I was working on uh, uh, special, uh, actually a lot of it was, was uh, top secret kind of equipment that I was repairing and stuff like that. They had a photography studio there as well, and so I would do my army work during the day, and then I would I, I started taking photographs. I got a Yashica twin lens reflex camera, and was taking a lot of pictures, and then I would develop the pictures, which was great at school. It was really neat. So we'd go into the lab, and they had all the stuff set up, and so on the on our off time, we got to do a lot of other kind of cool things, and so I learned to be a photographer, and I learned how to develop film at that point. I just got through making this instrument called a Cora, and I'm, I'm taking it in a different rest. It's, it was invented in, the, in, in West Africa, and there's a lot of amazing Cora players. It's a harp that sits in your lap. They have a big, big a gourd that's covered with cow skin, and they have 22 or 21 strings, and they play it like this. Mm -hmm. And those guys and gals that play that, they sing with it and they play it. It's an amazing instrument. So I just got through building this, and so as I'm working on this instrument, as I'm playing it, I'm learning, to, I'm improvising. I don't want to become a chora player or a West African chora player. I want to become, I want to use the, the instrument as a tool to express what is inside of me. And the question I'm always asking myself is how do I sit at this instrument and allow things new to come into being? How do I get out of the way and watch and listen and, and develop new skills and new abilities like putting sounds together in another way. I love working, I love inventing, I love building, and, and watching my own creativity develop things and that watching how ideas come into being and how other people's ideas come into being. So it's like if I'm thinking, uh, I do a lot of stuff, I, I, I 
I follow my creativity wherever it takes me. So like I, I'm a musician, I do, I build things, I do sculpture, I do all kinds of stuff. And so the creativity lab kind of came naturally out of that, which is the, maybe the newest thing here at Inner City Arts on one level. But I think the thing that really gets me out of bed is, is the fact that uh, I'm awake. I wake up in the morning, I put my feet on the floor, I'm hungry, I have breakfast. I usually do yoga and meditate, and then I, I come to work. But uh, I think that the, the draw really is working with these amazing human beings and being in a situation to talk to you and, and have this, this, this work that you all are doing and seeing what you're going to do with this stuff, okay? And it's all like, how do we manipulate things in new and unique ways to make things happen? And that's the, I love that process. I love to brainstorm. I love to to think new ideas and have new thoughts and make them come into reality. One of the most interesting things we learned about Bob is that his creativity only grows with time. Not only does it grow, but it multiplies with each student who attends Inner City Arts. My experience has been amazing. Ever since I first walked through those big garden gates, it was like, I remember the first day I came. It was last year when I was a freshman in high school and I came in, and they were dancing, and I was dancing, and I was like, mm, mm, yeah, yeah, and I was doing it, and then everybody just welcomed me in, and I was like, family, it was just so awesome, and, my, and it's been like that ever since, it's like family, you know, I've got uncles and aunties and cousins and brothers and sisters. Which is great, you know, it's always, because you're always surrounded by positive, I mean, positive teachers, and your friends are just like, they're always there. So you're always, you're always gonna have fun, and um, it's always a great thing, you know, when I get to come here, like, you know, straight from school or just from the house. And I always give time to be here, because it's just a great place. Cool. So, uh, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, I just, I love the inner city arts. <laughs> the efforts of Bob and his team have inspired people outside of the inner city arts community. William and Kate toured campus and created art with the kids. Most recently, LA Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa was honored at Inner City Arts for all his support over the years. If, if you look at my life, all of the ups and downs and the experiences that I've had, your life has ups and downs and experiences too. And we share this kind of common humanity. And that out of that humanity, we are formed and shaped. And that, that if you can stay in the game and continue to do the work and do your best, you will really thrive. When I was in school, I, nobody told me that, you know, hey, you have to really work hard. I saw the kids in the class, even when I was a little boy, I saw the kids that were really smart in the class, and I saw that they could really do it easily, and it took me a lot more work to be able to do it, but nobody really clued me in that you've got to learn how to use your equipment. You have to learn how to use your brain and your mind and your heart and your hands and your, your ability. You have to figure that one out. And when you figure that out, what you actually have is you're sitting in a Ferrari, which is an unbelievable, you have the best equipment you could possibly imagine, no matter how you look at that. You just have to learn how to master it and how to use it. So kids come here, we come here as teachers, as staff, we are growing as well as you're growing. And so it's all about growth and, and expanding our consciousness and becoming more capable of doing things. And so out of this, we're really building the future of mankind. Bob's endless passion for manifesting his creativity in different ways has inspired us as we make this film. There are so many ways we can express ourselves. Dance is my creative outlet. It is the one thing that has never failed to make me happy. I like to express myself in ways that make me feel comfortable. And in the end, it impresses others. Whether if it is something popular or unpopular, it's something that makes me feel good inside. This is how I express myself. I would be homeless without art. In the end, just like Bob, we want to leave our own legacy of creativity.